Hey, it's Random Code here, and today I want to showcase how we can run a basic Python script inside a Docker container. So first of all, a Docker container is just a very simple enclosed environment where we can run some stuff. In this case, I want to showcase how I build this Docker file, which is kind of like the, the formula of how we're going to do stuff. We're then going to build our Docker file and create an image, and from this image we can create a container which runs our, in this case, Python script. So first of all, let me just showcase, I created a simple Python script, which is a simple print.py, which just simply prints, hello world. And from our console, I'm inside this introduction folder, I would just simply be able to run our Python script doing Python 3, print.py. And it prints hello world. So that's the goal. Creating an image and creating a container, have a Ubuntu, in this case, environment that prints Hello World to our console. So let's have a look at our Docker file. So the Docker file is kind of like the formula of how we're going to create an image. And later on, this image creates a container from this. So first, we have something from, which is kind of like, at least I like to think of it as inheritance, where these setups build on something else. So I'm building on another Ubuntu setup. So I'm creating a Linux environment, just using the latest version of an Ubuntu image. I then run app update, update my apps, because I need to install Python, so I just run apt. So as you might guess, the run command just simply runs some code inside our console, that our container, when it comes to that. So we run apt update, then run apt install Python 3, that's why. Because when we install Python 3, we're going to have a prompt to come up and ask, do you want to install? Yes, no. And then we need to add this, add it as Y to make it work. Otherwise, it won't go through. Because it's just going to be waiting for an font, which would never come. We then set up working directory to be the user app source. I will then copy our printed pi file, our current directory, which is going to be our work directory, which we just set. And at the end, we're just going to run a simple md command, which is kind of like the last run command. So we can do as many run commands as we want when we initialize our setup. But at the end, we need one cmd to like finish, uh, like what are we actually doing, the end result. In this case, it's just simply running Python 3 type. And it's going to be print.py in our current folder because we're inside our working directory. So technically what we, do was, what we just did doing Python 3, and then our file. As small as what we're going to be doing in our CMD. So let's actually have a look at our Docker. So because I'm working on Windows, I have Docker desktops running in the background. Otherwise, I won't be able to access the Docker like environment. So one of the more basic Docker setups, we just do Docker images, just to check if there are any other images. As you see, I might actually have another Python printer, print some random Python stuff. But that's not going to work on today. We're going to create a new one. So we're going to do Docker build. It's G to create a name for our Docker image. So I'm just going to call it Python Hello World. And we're then going to give it the position of our Docker file. Because we just need to give it a directory which contains a Docker file named Docker file, because it then knows to use this Docker file to create the image, and because we're inside introduction already, which contains our Docker file, I can just simply do that to stay at our current position, and when we then run this build, it takes a few seconds and then build the image. So now I can do Docker images again. And we can see now a new Docker image called Python, Python Hello World. We can then run it, which means create a container and then execute our MD at this container. So, so you run execute everything. So we are building an environment, in this case an Ubuntu environment. So it's kind of like a virtual machine, but not really. It's inside a container. It's the containerization setup. So I would just simply do. Let's do Docker 
images just to get the list back up so we know what reactive building or running in this case and do docker run very simple and then python hello world and we then run it it then spins up a container shoots inside the container and then runs our python scripts and print hello world but let's actually have a look inside our container because this can really look a bit magical so what we can do is I can do docker run dash it for interactive. So I'm now going to be interacting with the container, my Ubuntu environment. And then again, give it my, I can say my image I'm going to be running. So Python, hello world. Then I'm going to give it a command. I'll be running bin slash bash. Which simply tells it, I would like to get a bash prompt from my container. So right now I'm actually inside my container, as you might see. Add root, add blah 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 blah, user app source. And think back, we're inside the user app source position because this is our working directory. And now if we did an L, you would see we have our print.py. And inside my container, inside this environment, I would also be able to again just simply do my Python 3 print.py and we print hello world. And if we just have a look around, we might actually be able to see that this is actually just a simple setup. So we have our source, let's go back more, let's see if we have other stuff. We then have our user, we have some app, games, lib all local bin include and so on so this is actually just a very basic open source environment we're probably not going to have all the functionality in like if you used it on your, uh, your local desktop but this is kind of like the dockerized which lacks a bit of feature for example if I remember back i'm not able to like edit files using nano i don't know i think that's the basics but let's actually go back to App source source and we have our printer pi. So I would for example like to change from printer pi to do nano pi. We don't have nano, but because we're inside Ubuntu, I can just simply do apps install now and give it a few seconds to install. And then I would be able to do nano printer pi and we can now edit it. And let's do hello the world. A few more exclamation marks. I would then save. And we can then do some basic link stuff. Add. Check the content of our it catenating. So check the content of our printed pi file. As you can see, it has been updated. And run it again. Run the command. And you can see it has been updated. But the concept is when we exit our container, this it's it stops working and it doesn't exist anymore. So now I could do Docker container ls, which gives me a list of all the running containers and stats. But as you can see, there's no containers running. So all the changes, even though we make changes, those changes would not exist anymore because if I then just did Docker images, then run, run Python hello world, I would still just print hello world exclamation mark because we're just building it from the image, which is this setup, which hasn't been changed. So I hope you got a better understanding of the symbols functionality of docker and how we can create a simple docker container which contains a python script which we can execute and we can also interact with it so if you enjoyed this showcase of docker python please leave a like and subscribe and i wish you all a wonderful